welcome to the new English Drama Group production. You are about to hear a radio play adaptation of Susan Glassbelt's Trifles. The year is 1916, and we are at the farmhouse of John Wright, who was found dead the previous day. This feels good. Come up to the fire, ladies. I'm not cold. Now, Mr. Hill, before we move things about, you explain to Mr. Anderson just what you saw when you came here yesterday morning. By the way, has anything been moved, or are things just as you left them yesterday? It's just the same. When it dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. No use getting pneumonia with a big case on. But I told him not to touch anything except the stove. And you know, Frank... Somebody should have been left here yesterday. Oh, yesterday. When I had to send Frank to Morris Center for that man who went crazy, I want you to know I had my hands full yesterday. I knew you could drive back from Omaha today, and as long as I went over everything here myself... Well, Mr. Hale, tell us just what happened when you came here yesterday morning. Harry and I had started to town with a load of potatoes. We came along the road from my place, and as I got here, I said, I'm going to see if I can't get John Wright to go in with me on a party telephone. I spoke to about Wright about it once before, and he put me off, saying folks talk too much anyway, and all he has was peace and quiet. I guess you know about how much he talked himself. But I thought maybe if I went to the house and talked about it before his wife, Though I said to Harry that I didn't know it's what his wife wanted made much difference to John. Let's Eddie. talk about that later, Mr. Hale. I do want to talk about that, but for now, just tell us what happened when you got to the house. I didn't hear or see anything. I knocked at the door and still it was all quiet inside. I knew they must be up. It was past eight o'clock. So I knocked again and I thought I heard somebody say, Come in. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure yet. But I opened the door. This door, and there in that rocker sat Mrs. Rye. What was she doing? She was rocking back and forth. She had her apron in her hand and was kind of pleating it. And how did she look? Well, she looked queer. How do you mean, queer? Well, as if she didn't know what she was going to do next. And kind of done up. How did she seem to feel about your coming? Well, I don't think she minded it. One way or other, she didn't pay much attention. I said, how do, Mrs. Wright? It's cold, ain't it? And she said, is it? And went on kind of pleading at her apron. Well, I was surprised. She didn't ask me to come up to the stove or to sit down, but just sat there, not even looking at me. So I said, I want to see John. And then she laughed. I guess you would call it a laugh. I thought of Harry and the team outside, so I said it a little sharp. Can't I see John? No, she says, kind of dull like. Ain't he home, says I. Yes, says she. He's home. Then why can't I see him? I ask her out of patience. Because he's dead, says she. Dead, says I. She just nodded her head. Not getting a bit excited, but rocking back and forth. 
What? Where is he? Says I, not knowing what to say. She just pointed upstairs like that. I got up with the idea of going up there. I walked from there here. Then I says, what, what did he die of? He died of a rope around his neck. So she just went on pleading at her apron. Well, I went out and called Harry. I thought I might need help. We went upstairs and then there he was lying. I, I the- think I'd rather have you go into that upstairs where you can point it all out. Just go on now with the rest of the story. Well, my first thought was to get that rope off. It looked... <clears throat> but Harry, he went up to him and he said, No, he's dead all right. and We'd better not touch anything. So we went back downstairs. She was still sitting that same way. Has anybody been notified? I asked. No, says she, unconcerned. Who did this, Mrs. Wright? said Harry. He said it business-like, and she stopped pleading of her apron. I don't know, she says. You don't know, says Harry. No, says she. Weren't you sleeping in the bed with him, says Harry. Yes, says she, but I was on the inside. Somebody slipped a rope round his neck and strangled him. You didn't wake up, says Harry. I didn't wake up. She said after him, we must have looked as if we didn't see how that could be. For after a minute, she said, I sleep sound. Harry was going to ask her more questions, but I said, maybe we ought to let her tell the story first to the coroner or the sheriff. So Harry went fast as he could to River's place where there's a telephone. And what did Mrs. Wright do when she knew that you'd gone for the coroner? She moved from that chair to this one over here and just sat there with her hands held together and looking down. I got a feeling that I ought to make some conversation. So I said I had come in to see if John wanted to put in the telephone. And then that she started to laugh and then she stopped and looked at me. Scared? I don't know. Maybe it wasn't scared. I wouldn't like to say it was. Soon Harry got back and then up the lawyer came and you, Mr. Peters. And so I guess that's all I know that you don't. Hmm. Um, I I guess we'll go upstairs first, and then out to the barn and around there. You're convinced that there was nothing important happening here? Nothing that would point to any motive? Nothing here but kitchen things. (laughs) Here's a nice mess. Oh, her fruit. It did freeze. Is she worried about that when it turns so cold? She said the fire god and the jars would break. Well, can you beat the women? Out for murder and worrying about her preserves. <laughs> I guess before we're through, she may have something more serious than preserves to worry about. Well, women are used to worrying over trifles. <laughs> and yet, for all their worries, what would we do without the ladies? Dirty towels? Not much of a housekeeper, would you say, ladies? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. To be sure. And yet, I know there are some Dixon County farmhouses which do not have such roller towels. Those towels get dirty awful quick. Men's hands aren't always as clean as they might be. (laughs) Loyal to your sex, I see. But you and Mrs. Wright were neighbors. I suppose you were friends, too? I've not seen much of her of late years. I've not been in this house. It's more than a year. And why was that? You didn't like her? I liked her all well enough. Former's wives have their hands full, Mr. Henderson. And then... Yes? It never seemed a very cheerful place. No, it's not cheerful. I shouldn't say she had the homemaking instinct. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's a right head either. You mean they didn't get on very well? No, I don't mean anything. But I don't think a place be any cheerful of for John Wright's being in it. I'd like to talk more of that a little later. I want to get the lay of things upstairs now. I suppose anything Mrs. Peters does will be all right. She was to take in some clothes for her, you know, and a few little things. We left in such a hurry yesterday. Yes, but I would like to see what you take, Mrs. Peters, and keep an eye out for anything that might be of use to us. Yes, Mr. Henderson. 
I hate to have men coming into my kitchen, snooping around and criticizing. Yeah, of course, it's no more than the duty. <laughs> Duty's all right. But I guess that deputy sheriff that came out to make the fire might have got a little of this on. <laughs> Wish I'd thought of that sooner. Seems mean to talk about her for not having things slicked up when she had to come away in such a hurry. She had bread set. Oh, she was going to put it in this bread box. <sighs> it's a shame about her fruit. I wonder if it's all gone. I think there's here that's some uh, that's all right, Mrs. Peters. Yes, oh, here, this is cherries too. I declare, I believe that's the only one. She'll feel awful bad after all her hard work in the hot weather. I remember the afternoon I put up my cherries last summer. Well, I must get her dressed and choose from the front room closet. Uh, you coming with me, Mrs. Hale? You could help me carry them. Oh, my, it's cold in there. Right, was stingy. I think maybe that's why she kept so much to herself. She didn't even belong to the ladies, eh? I suppose she felt she couldn't do a part, and then you don't enjoy things when you feel shabby. <laughs> she used to wear pretty clothes and be lively when she was Minnie Foster, one of the town girls singing in the choir. But that, that was 30 years ago. This is all you was to take in? Uh, she said she wanted an apron. Funny thing to want, for there isn't much to get you dirty in jail, goodness knows. But I suppose just to make her feel more natural, she said there was in the top drawer in this cupboard. Yes, here. And then her little shawl that always hung behind the door. Yes, here it is. Mrs. Peters? Yes, Mrs. Hale. Do you think she did it? Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, I don't think she did. Asking for an apron and her little shawl, worrying about a fruit. Mr. Peter says it looks bad for her. Mr. Henderson is awful sarcastic in her speech, and he'll make fun of her saying she didn't wake up. Well, I guess John Wright didn't wake when they were slipping that rope under his neck. No, it is strange. It must have been done awful crafty and still. They say it was such a funny way to kill a man, rigging it all up like that. That's just what Mr. Hale said. There was a gun in the house. He says that's what he can't understand. Mr. Henderson said coming out that was what needed for the case was a motive. Something to show anger or sudden feeling. Well, I don't see any signs of anger around here. Half this table is wiped. Maybe I'll just <clears throat> wonder how they're finding things upstairs. I hope she had a little more red up up there. You know, it seems kind of sneaking. Locking her up in town, and then coming out here and trying to get her own house to turn against her. But Mrs. Hale, the law is the law. I suppose it is. <laughs> Better loosen up your things, Mrs. Peters. You won't fear them when you go out. <laughs> oh, would you look at that? She was piecing a quilt. This lock cabin pattern. Oh, pretty, isn't it? I wonder if she was going to quilt it or just knot it. They wonder if she was going to quilt it or just nod it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frank's fire didn't do much up there, did it? Well, let's go out to the, to the barn and get that cleared up. I don't know if there is anything so strange. Our taking up our time with little things while we're waiting for them to get the evidence. I don't see if there's anything to laugh about. Of course, they've got awful important things on their minds. Mrs. Peters, look at this one. Here, this is the one she was working on, and look at the sewing. All the rest of it has been so nice and even, and look at this. It's all over the place. Why, it looks as if she didn't know what she was about. <gasps> oh, what are you doing, Mrs. Hale? Just pulling out a stitch or two that's not so very good. Bad sewing always made me fidgety. I don't think we ought to touch things. I'll just finish up this end. <clears throat> Mrs. Peters? Yes, Mrs. Hale. What do you suppose she was so nervous about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know as she was nervous. I sometimes so awful queer when I'm just tired. I'll just finish up this end. Well, I must get these things wrapped up. They may be through sooner than we think. I, I wonder where I can find a piece of paper and string. In the cupboard, maybe. Why, he's a birdcage. Do you have a bird, Mrs. Hale? 
Well, I don't know whether she did or not. I've not been here for so long. There was a man around last year selling canaries cheap, but I don't know as she took one. Maybe she did. She used to sing real pretty herself. Seems funny to think of a bird here. But she must have had one, or why would she have a cage? I wonder what happened to it. I suppose maybe the cat got it. No, she didn't have a cat. She got that feeling some people have about cats being afraid of them. My cat got into a room and she was real upset and asked me to take it out. <laughs> My sister Bessie was like that. Queer, ain't it? Uh, why, look at this door. Oh, it's broke. One hinge is pulled apart. Looks as if someone must have been rough with it. Why, yes. I wish if they're going to find any evidence, they'd be about it. I don't like this place. But I'm awful glad you came with me, Mrs. Hale. It would be so lonesome for me sitting here all alone. It would, wouldn't it? But I tell you what I do wish, Mrs. Peters. I wish I'd come over sometimes when she was here. I wish I had. But of course, you were awful busy, Mrs. Hale. Your house and your children. I could have come. I stayed away because it were cheerful, and that's why I ought to have come. I, I never liked this place. Maybe because it's down in a hollow and you don't see the road. I don't know what it is, but it's a lonesome place, and always was. I wish I'd come over to see Minnie Foster sometimes. I can see now. Well, you mustn't reproach yourself, Mrs. Hale. Sometimes we just don't see how it is without a folks until something comes up. Not having children makes less work, but it makes a quiet house and, and Wright out to work all day and no company when he did come in. Did you know John Wright, Mrs. Peters? No, I've, I've seen him in town. They say he was a good man. Yes, good. He didn't drink and kept his word as well as most, I guess, and paid his debts. But he was a hard man, Mrs. Peters. Just to pass the time of day with him, oh, like a raw wind that gets to the bone. I should think she would have wanted a bird. But what do you suppose went with it? I don't know, unless it got sick and died. You weren't raised round here, were you? You didn't know her? Not until they brought her yesterday. <laughs> she, come to think of it, she was kind of like a bird herself. Real sweet and pretty, but kind of timid and fluttery. Oh, she did change. Tell you what, Mrs. Peters, why don't you take the Colton with you? It might take up her mind. Why, I think that's a real nice idea, Mrs. Hale. There couldn't possibly be any objection to it, could there? Uh, no, just what would I take? I wonder if her patches are in here and her things. Oh, here's some red. I expect this had got some sewing things in it. Oh, what a pretty box. Looks like something somebody would give you. Maybe her scissors are in here. Oh, what? There's something wrapped up in this piece of silk. Why, this isn't her scissors. Oh, Mrs. Peters, it, it's... Oh, it's the bird. But, Mrs. Peter, look at it. its neck. Look at its neck. It, it's all to the other side. Somebody wrung its neck. Well, ladies, have you decided whether she was going to quilt it or knot it? Uh, we think she was going to knot it. Well, that's interesting, I'm sure. Has the bird flown? We think the cat got it. Is there a cat? Well, not now. They're superstitious, you know. They leave. No sign at all of anyone having come from the outside. Their own rope. Now let's go up again and go over it piece by piece. It, it would have had to have been someone who knew just the right thing to do. She liked the bird. She was going to bury it in that pretty box. When I was a girl, my, my kitten, there was a boy who took a hatchet. And before my eyes... And before I could get there, if they hadn't helped me back, I would have hurt him. I wonder how it would seem never to have had any children around. <laughs> no, Wright would like the bird. I think that sang. She used to sing. He killed that too. We don't know who killed the bird. I knew John Wright. It was an awful thing that was done in this house that night, Mrs. Hale. Killing a man while he slept, slipping a rope round his neck that choked the life out of him. His neck. 
choke the life out of him. We don't know who killed him. We don't know. If there have been years and years of nothing, then a bird to sing to you. It would be awful still after the bird was still. I know what stillness is. When we homesteaded in Dakota and my first baby died, after he was two years old, and me with no other then. How soon do you suppose that we threw looking for the evidence? I know what stillness is. The law has got to punish crime, Mrs. Hale. I wish you'd see me, Foster, when she wore a white dress with blue ribbons and stood up there in the choir and sang. I wish I'd come over here once in a while. That was a crime. That was a crime. Who's going to punish that? We mustn't take on. I might have known she needed help. I know how things can be for women with... I tell you, it's, it's queer, Mrs. Peters. We live close together and we live far apart. We all go through the same things. It's all just a different kind of the same thing. If I was you, I wouldn't tell her if food was gone. Tell her it ain't. Tell her it's all right. Take this and to prove it to her. She she may never know whether it was broke or not. I'll just wrap it in this petticoat. <laughs> My, it's a good thing the man couldn't hear us. When they just laugh, getting all stirred up of a little thing like like a dead canary, as if that could have anything to do with them. With it. <laughs> Wouldn't they laugh? Maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. I'll just hold on for the box for a while. No, Peters, it's all perfectly clear except a reason for doing it. But you know juries when it comes to women. If there was some definite thing, something to show, something to make a story about, a thing that would connect up with this strange way of doing it. Well, I've got the team around. Pretty cold out there. I'm going to stay here a while by myself. You can send Frank out for me, can't you? I want to go over everything. I'm not satisfied that we can't do better. Do you want to see what Mrs. Peters is going to take in? <laughs> uh, I, I guess they're not very dangerous things the ladies have picked out. Mm. No. Mrs. Peters doesn't need supervising. For that matter, a sheriff's wife is married to the law. Ever think of it that way, Mrs. Peters? Not just that way. <laughs> married to the law. <laughs> I just want you to come here a minute, George. We ought to take a look at these windows. Ah, oh, windows. We'll be right out, Mr. Hale. Well, Henry, at least we found out that she was not gonna quilt it. She was gonna... What was it you call it, ladies? We call it not it, Mr. Henderson. Trifles by Susan Glassbell. Adapted for radio and directed by Florian Rima. Stage management by Jessica McGarry. Original score by Devin Robinson. Featuring Megan Nerlich as the county attorney. Ziri Zoe Wiedmann as Mrs. Peters. Emilia Habib as the sheriff. Haley Neumeyer as Mr. Hale. And Teresa Gaia as Mrs. Hale. If you enjoyed the show, there is a donation link in the description. Thank you for listening and good night.